You may feel lost and alone, but God knows exactly where you are. And he has a good plan for your life. And these people that uh, Tim's just prayed about, he's got a plan for their life. And it's already starting to develop. And we've all had to accept God's plan somewhere. And we all become a part of the plan. Whether it's a great big plan or whether it's just a plan. The verse I want us to look at, to, I'm going to read, start us off with tonight. Um, I'll be reading them out anyway, so if, if you want to jot them down and maybe have a look later, that's okay. But the most famous one about plans, you'll all know it off by heart. What is it? Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that just amazing? That God of the universe is taking interest in the plans for your life. It isn't random. It isn't by chance. It's in the plan. The definition of the word plan or plans is this, what I picked up today, well, yesterday. A detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. The other part is to arrange beforehand. God's plan for you was arranged beforehand. In fact, the Bible says that it was before the foundations of the world. He had his plans ready for you. There are many instances in the Bible with men and women that get disappointed with God's plans. And some get so disappointed that they even try to change or alter God's plans. It's nigh on impossible. In fact, it is impossible. You'd have to be something really special to change God's plan. We know about Abraham praying and saying, you know, if you just give me some more, if you just give me some more. God's plan was to completely destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham appealed to him. But God knew about the appeal before it even happened. He knew who was coming out. He knew where they'd be going. So it was already planned out. And he's probably just waiting for Abraham to just appeal. How many of us have tried to change God's plans in our life, knowing that God wants us to do something, and we go, no, no, I don't want, no, no, that, no, that's not for me. I know I've said it, and I'm sure you have at some time in your life gone, no, no. Or we can go, no, I don't think I've heard that right. And we know we have. We know we've heard the plan. We know what we've heard, what God's telling us to do. Uh, but we can reject it. We can reject God's plan. We can reject it. But that's what's happening to the world. It's rejecting God's plan. Yeah. And every time that they reject God's plan, yeah. it's going to go wrong. Remember, God's plan is perfect. <laughs> perfect. How many of us have made plans anyway? Not, not, not talking about just godly plans or ministry plans, but just plans in life. Only to have them thwarted. I, do it, I bet I do it every day. Kev says to me, rings up most days, what's the plan for today? It's like, what's the recipe for today, Jim? Hang on, Kev, let me wake up, I'll think of a plan. <laughs> Was it the 18 when one of them used to say, I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. That doesn't happen with me much, not with my plans. We set out for a day's work, or do what we're doing, and within about 15 minutes, 
he'll tell you, and I'll say to Kev, the plan's changed. We're going to do it this way now. And then we go past where we should be going and end up somewhere else. Plan's already changed. Sometimes it gets changed by man. Sometimes it, our, our own plans will get changed by God. In Proverbs 16, verses 7 to 9, it says, when a, man's way, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Better is it with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. 9. A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. You can make the plans, and if it's favourable where God is, he'll be directing your steps. How do we know which, which plans are ours and which plans are God's? Somebody said to me once, not long after I'd become a Christian, if you want to make God laugh, son, tell him your plan. Because <coughs> he'll just laugh at you. Yeah. Oh, that's your plan, is he, Cliff? Nah, that ain't going to happen, son. And it stuck with me. So I know that when God plans something for me, it's going to be what he, what, what he wants. It's going to be productive. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be fitting me. We've heard it said. Tim said it not long back about it. Ministry or whatever. It's going to fit you perfect. It says in his plan. The Bible's full of plans. It is a book of plan. It's orderly. Even though there's chaos in, in some of the readings of man. But it's orderly. There is plan. When I give the little Gideon Bibles out, I say to the kids at the schools mainly, it's a book of instruction. And them instructions are God's plans. What he wants us to do, to stay safe even. Just stay safe. Listen to God's plans. We can say, I mean it was said to me as well, I think it was Phil Weaver that said to me once, I said, I've come up with, a, I've come up with something. Oh, great. He says, now then, Cliff, he heard me and he says, now then, tell me. Is that a good idea? Or is it a God idea? Is it a good plan? Or is it God's plan? And we sometimes, we have to, we struggle to find out which exactly is, is it. Because sometimes we can go, no, God's given me this. And further down the line, it'll fail. If it's not from God, you can be certain it will fail. God's plans are always better and perfect for us. And as I say, Tim said, if we go into ministry, the ministry God gives you, his plan for your ministry will be perfect. And I remember his words said, he'll fit you like a glove, it'll be perfect for you. God's plans are perfect for each and every individual of us. And as he says in Jeremiah, we will prosper and no harm will come to us. Oh, I'm just going to go through a few people. I, I won't be a lot of Bible reading tonight, but trust me, the, there is some stuff and we'll go through it. Let's have a quick look at Abraham. He didn't believe God's plan, that he would have a real heir with Sarah. He didn't believe that. God told him about things, but he didn't believe it. So instead they came up with their own plan. So they went out with their own plans and produced who? Ishmael. Oh, Ishmael. He's known as the father of the Arab nations. So they carried on and they went along with their own plan with the maidservant, Hagar. And then we all know what happened from there. If we follow our own plans, then we'll always end up with second best. And Ishmael instead of the, the promise that God has for us which would be, in Abraham's case Isaac we can look at Gideon his plan wasn't nothing to do with to end up the way he did he was actually hiding stuff in the wine press and the angel of the Lord came to him and it talks about, and he said with capital H, mighty, mighty warrior. 
and there he was shivering in his boots. Did he become that mighty warrior because he stepped into the plan of God? Yes, he did. If you step into the plan of God, you will become mighty warriors. And as Tim said just earlier on, you know, we'll be brave enough to get out there and do what we have to do. What about Moses? Old Moses. Old Moses. Oof, dear. Couldn't, oh, do you think Moses, I mean, when he was capable of thinking, after he was the baby in the bulrushes, and then he came up into the Egyptian way of life, and it was charmed way of life he had. Yeah. Oh, we must have thought this is... Because he didn't know his past. He didn't know his past. Thinking his wildest dreams or thoughts, he would have thought about God's plans for his life. I mean, he didn't know God as God, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac. He didn't know. But do you think he could have even thought the things that happened to him would have happened to him? All the ups and downs that man had. How many of us have ups and downs in life? But it's all in God's plan. Because we go through the refiner's fire in God's plan. If we don't go through the refiner's fire, we're never going to benefit and move forward. Do you think he would ever expect from the charmed life that he led he would be a murderer? That he'd run away from that charmed life that he knew? That God would seek him out, bring him back under duress? Moses didn't want to come and be a part of God's plan. He rebelled against that. What have I got? Why me? What have you got in your hand, Moses? You've got no excuse. In the end, he had to relent and follow God's plan. Yeah. Right. And we can go kicking and screaming, but in the end, we'll be following God's plan. Yeah. God will bring him back to free the Israelites from the tyranny of the Egyptians, from the people he believed he once belonged to. Do you think he ever thought that that would happen? Once he thought he'd escaped uh, Egypt, he thought, well, that's me done. But no, there was years to come for Moses. That he would come back and he would lead the Israelites through the sea, the parting of the sea. He spent 40 years in the wilderness with them. And he was leading this insubordinate, moaning group of people that he probably even persecuted sometime in the past. And that God would even entrust him with the laws, the commandments at Mount Sinai. Then to have him lead the people to the promised land. Moses must have been made up when he got to uh, the Abram mountain range and stood there on, on, ne on Nebo, or Nebo, overlooking the promised land. Could you imagine that? I've gone through all this, God's plan, and here I am now. His chest must have filled out a little bit. <sighs> Made it. We've only got to go down there. There's Jericho. We're coming over. God's plan. I know this is God's plan. He's been telling us for years. He's got the plan for the promised land. This is it. And I've bought him here. And we're going over. Only to feel and know, Moses, you ain't going. Imagine how deflated he probably would have been in a human form. Would we I like to accept that we do so much work in the kingdom work only at the last minute for it to be given to someone else to do? To look like they were having glory. But no, Moses accepted God's plan. It wasn't in God's plan for him to cross over and lead that Israelite nation. But it was to be Joshua. He trained Joshua up for it anyway to take his place. He probably didn't think it was going to happen so quickly. Are we ready for God's plan to change our lives? To take us right through to the brink of, you've made it. To go, hang on a minute, Cliff. I want someone else to do that job. Yes, but look, no, no, no. I've got someone else to do that job. But Moses accepted God's plan. There he died in the Moab. 
And it says that God buried him. And no one knows where his grave is, even to this day. So you can't even go put flowers on his grave and say, well done, Moses. <laughs> Here lies Moses, well done. You did all you could with the dash. We don't even know where he is. Talk about the, un the unknown soldier. But Moses fully accepted God's plan right throughout his life, through all his ups and downs. And he even tried to wriggle off the plan. How many of us do the same? I know I do. The times I wriggle off. Lord, no, let somebody else do it. Can't somebody else go? Can't somebody else speak? Go and speak to that person, Cliff. Oh, can't someone else do it? That's not the plan. My plan is I won't go home for me tea. No, I've got one more job for you to do today. Gideon never saw himself as a mighty man, a mighty warrior. We're going to look at David. Could you imagine David in his wildest dreams when he was a, a shepherd boy tending his father's sheep that he would be king? It was God's plan for his life. He was going to be king. But could you imagine him looking after the sheep thinking, oh, I'm going to be king one day? Isn't it sometimes good that God doesn't reveal the plans for your life and my life? God's plan will, will, not can, not could, not maybe, but will lead us into some amazing places with some amazing people and in some rewarding situations. We serve an amazing God that can do it. And he can do it. We'll come further forward a, a while and say, do you think Jesus' mother Mary would have even thought her plan, the plan for her life was to bear the Saviour? To have him? Do you think it was in her plan? Never. Never. She was just a girl growing up. But God's plan was in her life. Do you think the disciples could have even imagined God's plan for their lives when they were fishing? Lowest to the low fishermen, pulling it in day and night, pulling them nets in, struggling, it's getting by sometimes, out there chancing on the waters. Do you think it would have, they would have even imagined the plan for their life? That them people, them men, would have changed the world? through Jesus and walking with him? What about Judas? What about the plan for Judas's life? Do you think if Judas would have known the plan for his life, it would have turned out the way it did? No. But the plan for Judas was already set out before the foundations of the earth. They were already there. Sometimes you can feel a little bit sorry for Judas because he didn't know right up until the last days what the plan for him was because he kept thinking he was doing the right thing all the time. How many of us think we're doing the right thing? I do. What about the Apostle Paul? Could you imagine him thinking the plan would change for his life from when he was Saul? persecuting, murdering these Christians that were followed Jesus to supporting them and, and living with them sacrificing everything for them he'd stoned them one week and was with them the next do you think he could have built, you think when he was Saul he would have believed what God was going to do with his life because remember this with Saul he already thought he was doing God's plan Getting rid of these blasphemers. But God revealed himself to him. And the plan changed. And the man followed God's plan. And he became responsible for the Bible. Lots of it in the New Testament. I'm going to read you um, 
There's a guy that I, I didn't really think about until last in the week, and he just clicked into me, into me, into me, whatever. There's a guy that uh, tried to really didn't want God's plan. Jonah. Yeah. Jonah. Now then, what a guy, Jonah. Let me just read you a part of Jonah. The book of Jonah, it's only four, it's only four very small chapters, the book of Jonah is. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of, yeah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for there is wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into, and go, went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What? Does he tell us that God knows every hair on our heads? <coughs> so that means he must know where the head is. And if it's attached to the body, then he knows where that is. So, is there any hiding from God? You cannot hide. And then we know the story of Jonah. That you know, he hid, the boat got tossed, it got thrown here and there. The seas were roaring, they were sinking, they tried to row back to shore. And then the captain said... Everybody pray to your God. He wasn't taking no chances. Everybody pray to your God. And then all of a sudden Jonah's missing. Where's he? Where's he gone? Yeah. There he was down in the bowels of the boat. What are you doing down here, Jonah? Pray to your God like the rest of us. And who are you anyway? When he told them who he was, they, they turned and said, You'd better pray. Didn't work. The, t the waves carried on coming. So what did they do with Jonah? <sniffs> Overboard you went. Jonah's plans were already getting thwarted. Now he'd run off from God. He tried hide. The next thing he's found himself in the sea. And then he's in the belly of a fish. Seems a bit funny, don't it? Though, that. But they found a body in it. They found a man's body in a shit in a fish not long ago, didn't they? So, he ends up being spewed up out of the fish, which seems a bit ironic and a bit crazy to me, but that's the Bible, and that's God, not crazy, but he knows his word, and nothing is impossible. It did have to be a damn big fish, forget me and him. <laughs> I'll tell you, he'd be a big whale. Now, all these little ones, begging. In fact, bigger than that. <laughs> so when you people say, I've caught a fish, how big? <laughs> but anyway, he got spewed up, got vomited out, the Bible says, ended up on the land. He'd already been crying out to God in the fish. What do you want? Then the plan was revealed to him. What did I tell you? Go to Nineveh and tell them they're, they're wicked, they need to alter the ways. So what did Jonah do? He still was resentful, but he went. It was God's plan for him, and he tried not to get involved with God's plan. And this is what happens to people. God will have his way. And if you won't be Jonah, that's up to you. But you won't be obliged. I don't know if you'll end up in a fish, but you will do what God says. Outside of God's plans for us in life is confusion. Yeah. And that's what it is, it's confusion. And you know, I listened to someone preaching the other day, and it was a long preach really, but the essence of it was that when the ark came to rest, God said to them on the boat, right, spread out now, spread out and multiply. Go repopulate the earth, spread out. But they didn't move very far. 
And then the plan was, their plan was the Tower of Babel. That wasn't God's plan. So what did he do? Sent confusion. They couldn't even speak to one another. They were out of God's plan. Are we living God's plan for our lives? How do we know? If we are, the Bible tells us we need to seek him. And seek him now why he can be found. He tells us that. His plans will always succeed and it will always accomplish that what it sets out to do. The best thing is to surrender to God's plan, or you could say his will for your life, and prosper, come to no harm as it says in Jeremiah. It may not always seem the best plan to you and I, But his plan will bring that order and satisfaction in your life. You'll never be satisfied with your own plan. You might have a little bit of glory now and again. Yeah, I've cracked that. That was great. And your plans for going on holiday and stuff like that, and it all goes well. That's okay. But remember, even your little plans are God's, and still in God's plan. He's allowing you to do it. God's plan is to save you from destruction. How did he do that? How did he save us from destruction? Well, he sent Jesus. That was his plan, to send Jesus. The perfect plan and the perfect sacrifice. In God's plan, we know this, we're all born, are we, we've all been born, have we? Nobody's just sort of appeared from nowhere, you know, I'm here. So we've all been born. Do we all agree with that? Do we all remember being born? So we couldn't have had a lot to do with it, could we? We had nothing to do with us being born. Nothing. But God did. But also in God's plan... None of you are going to escape something. You're all going to die. I'm going to die. Not tonight, I hope. <laughs> but we're all going to die. And that's in God's plan also. If you think it isn't, then you're very foolhardy. So you didn't know about the plan for your birth. God did. He, knew the plan for your, he knows the plan for the time that you will depart this earth he knows it he's already got it it's in his plan because if you think if it if you were 25 some of you younger ones in the church barbara ray <coughs> get me on back no but some of the younger ones if you were to go to a young person and say to them at the age of 85 you're going to die you're going to die at 85. At 25, they go, well, I've got 60 years. Yeah, I'm all right, thanks very much. But then what happens when they get to 75? Yeah. And then they get to 80. And then they're thinking of, do you know, I ain't got long go here. So things can set in if they aren't in place. Fear. Try and get your house in order, running around thinking, I've only got five years, I've only got five years, and then the one year comes. So if God told everybody the time of our death, his plan for it, we'd all be shivering wrecks. We really, really would. We know where we're going as Christians to heaven, but does anybody really want to die? Because I don't. I know I've got eternal life, but I don't want to die either. I don't want to die. I'm not ready to go. I don't want to. I don't know when his plan is. And it's a good job I don't. Because it could be this week. Oh, that's something to think about, isn't it? Might not see me again. So if you've got any money you owe me, I'll have it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
His plan is that we should spend eternity with him. And it's in that heavenly place. Because we are all going to die. And we're all going to have an eternity. And the plan is where we can spend it. Where we can spend eternity. Remember, Jesus came that we might. So who prepared the place for us in that heavenly place? Only one. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. Let your, not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, and you will know it. Jesus has done it all. He is the completion of the plan. Amen. He is the full completion of the plan. Amen. And there's only one way we can get into that plan of, he of the heavenly places. And that's having relationship. The relationship with God. Relationship with him. And we can only really get that relationship with God through Jesus. And he was sacrificed and his blood shed. So that relationship through the forgiveness of sins could take place. The curtain was torn and the way was made. This is his main plan for your life. We used to, we've heard about the Germans and the final solution. The final solution plan for God, for you, is that you be with him. And it's hard to believe when we've seen things happening in the world today. As we come to close now and could any of you have really believed the plan of God in your life? Would any of you have ever thought where you'd end up here? Would you end up in the presence of God with his spirit in this room tonight? Could any of us ever imagine the plan for God had for us? Where he's brought you from? And I know Tim did this not so long ago. Before you knew God, and since you've known God. Now you're in God's plan. Could you imagine that you would be this far in God's plan? Before I was a Christian, you all know my testimony. There's no way I could have imagined God even had a plan for me let alone the plan that he set out for me. The plan that I've tried to wiggle out of. When you had a dis well, I despise the homeless and the drug addicts and the alcoholics. That's my plan. My plan was to just get rid of them. That was my final solution. But God's plan was different. He turned my heart towards them. That was God's plan. That wasn't my plan. I could not have done that. Only God could. Could I have imagined that I would ever speak in front of a, a wonderful assembly like you in a church? No. But it's God's plan. Because he fills us with what he wants us to speak out. And it's time, church, we spoke out. It is. It's time we spoke out. We were just diverted. We went into Asda the other day to pick up some, um, a, few, a microwave and stuff uh, for, a, for a, a, a guy that's moving into his own flat. So we went and picked him some stuff up. And as we stood in the queue, me and Kev loading it towards the belt, 
They were on about the, the poinsettia, the Christmas plant. And um, the, this lady on the chair was talking to the woman that was buying it and they were on about Christmas. And I couldn't help me big fat gob and I said, well, what's it all about? I always act, believe me, believe it or not, I can act dumb. <laughs> I can act stupid, <laughs> thick. Because whenever they wanted me to do something on the yard, you say, not me, I'm a thick lorry driver, I don't do things like that. No, don't, don't ask me to do anything technical, I'm just thick. Just play that chord. You can't be thick with God. He enables you. He will equip you. He will make the job right. And when it doesn't get right, take it back to him. Come and take my yoke, for my yoke is easy. Give me the problem. That's the plan. I could never have seen me doing the things that I do now, them years ago. I could never see me having, God having a plan for my life. Because I just didn't want no God anyway. So what's God's plan for your life? I don't care how old you are, I don't care how old you are, or how young you are, there's a plan for your life. Just like so many people in the Bible, God had a plan for their lives. The Bible's full of it. But the, when we find out what God's plan is, like the disciples and the apostles and the prophets, major and minor prophets, there's the others like Job. Do you think Job, when he was living on top of the world with all his stuff that he had, do you think he thought God's plan for him was to take it all off him or allow it to be taken off him? Because sometimes God allows bad things to happen. As we heard the other day, why does God allow bad things to happen? <coughs> it draws us closer to him, actually. Because we will then cry out. I've just lost my best mate 46 years, best mate. No, not quite 46, 40 years, 45 years, best mate died. And he said to me three years ago, I want you to promise me you won't, you won't stuff God at me. And I said, he says, I don't want you talking to me about God. I thought, well, that's going to be difficult for me. So I said, look, I'll tell you what I'll promise you I'll do. I'll promise you I won't talk to you about God, but I will not promise that I will not talk to God about you. I've held him in prayer, he lost the battle, only a few months older than me, so we never know, we never know, make the best of it. Look at Elijah, the ups and downs, running and hiding, they're all in God's plan. And remember what it was said, if you don't want to do it, someone else will. Seek God where he may be found. You know the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, the prayer from the Sermon on the Mount. Because Jesus did say, he didn't say pray this, he said pray like this. So it enables us to expand on that prayer. It enables us to not make the prayer fit us or change the words of God's prayer, but pray like this. It was probably one of the instructions that Jesus said, you know, this will fit everybody. You'll have to adjust it to fit you. But it will fit you, this prayer. Because it's a prayer for everything. There's nothing that we could want to pray about that isn't in the Lord's Prayer. We can expand on it, add to it in the middle of the lines. Add people to the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And can you make sure the next doors have got their bread as well, Lord? We can expand on it, pray like this. And when we say, you know, thy will be done, is that is God's will not a plan? Is he not a plan for your life? And I'm not saying alter the name of the prayer or alter anything in the prayer. But when we do pray it, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will. Your plan, thy plan will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. God's plan is going to happen. Whether you like it or you try to wriggle out of it. And if you love God, give up wriggling. Give it up. Follow him. Because he knows what's best for you, even when you don't think he does. I know, Phil, can you remember Bernard, B Bernard Adams? Do any of you know Bernard Adams? One or two might. He's, he's an old guy. And he always used to bless me, Ad Bernard. Because he always used to say, he never say, to our mate, see you lad, goodbye, good night. He'd never say that. He'd hug you and his words would be, I'll see you in the plan. He will see us in the plan. Let me see if I can read this out whether it's fitting for now. If you think you can hide from God's plans, you can't. He knows where you are, he knows what you want you to do. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. You can't escape God. Don't try and escape his plan for you. Has that gone off now, man? Can I pull it back up? Hope I haven't got any messages come up before. No, it's alright, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Don't feel lost. Don't feel alone. God knows exactly where you are. And he doesn't mean always the physical position. He knows where you are in here. He knows where you are in here. He knows exactly where you are. He knows where your spirit is. He knows, where, he knows everything. He knows exactly where you are. And he has a good plan for your life. Amen.